When you go to the website editor.p5js.org, this screen and code is the very first thing you're going to see. Here, you can see that function setup and function draw are already written for you, which means these are the basic functions you would like to know when you start coding with p5.js. FYI, editor.p5.js.org is an online real-time code editor for p5.js library. You don't need to download or install anything, which is so convenient. So just start off writing code here and you will see the outcome right away in this preview window next to the code. Before we start off learning how to code activity apps logo, let's search these function names because first, their website is amazing. And second, more importantly, I think it's always the best practice to look up the official documentation when you learn new stuff especially in programming. This is the official website. They provide English, Spanish, Chinese, and Korean versions. Here on the left, you will see these categories. Since we want to look up functions, we are going to click reference tab. Now here we see a lot of stuff. Just a quick tip for beginners. If you see these parentheses after a word, that means this thing is a function provided by p5.js. All right, let's search set a function. Now, the good thing about p5.js reference website, most of the times they give this short code example along with description. Let's read the description first. The important thing we need to remember here is the setup function is called once when the program starts, only once. And you can set initial properties of canvas, such as size and background. You can also do many other stuff inside this function setup, but just be aware that whatever you put inside this function, it's going to run only once in the very beginning, and it's not going to get repeated. Instead of with playing with this code example right now, I want to show you draw function. Here, I want to emphasize two things. First, the draw function is called after setup, and second, it runs continuously. From what I remember, it runs almost every second or every 100 milliseconds. Actually, let's print the console log to see how many times it renders. I think that's definitely more than one time per second, probably something between 10 and 100 milliseconds. Let's come back to the code example. I want to initialize my background color as green. So I will write that down and set up function. If we run this code, we see this beautiful bright green color. Now I want to write exactly the same function in draw, but with different numbers. I want to make it blue. Here, I am writing the color values with RGB, which ranges from 0 to 255. Do you see that there's no longer a green background? It probably rendered green at very, very first time, but then draw function just overrode it with blue color. And since setup function is called only once, as you remember, it no longer has a chance to bring the green color back. One more example. You see this line moving here up and down? This is because we wrote line function inside draw. Now we see that setup function initialized frame rate as 30. This means that 30 frames are rendered in a second. When I change this to 10, you see the line is moving much slower. Now I change to 60, it gets faster. I'm going to write frame rate 60 in setup and frame rate 10 in draw. Setup initialized frame speed to be fast, but because we overrode it in draw function, frame rate is now set to 10, which is much slower. All right, now the last thing, there was something called no loop in description. I don't use this too often, but it could be helpful to some people and in some cases. So let's write this no loop at the end of draw function to see if it really stops the program.
you see the line is no longer moving because it stopped the draw function to render. Just as a side note, if you are interested in changing how fast this canvas gets rendered or to control its speed, please go look up frame rate or frame count functions. It would be useful for you.